Good evening and welcome. I am Rosemary Parson, the Art Center's 2020 Gala Chair. Thank you for joining us at this year's Entirely Unexpected Gala, focusing on invest, illuminate, impact. Let's talk about that. Invest, the financial support of the community, our patrons, sponsors, and businesses. Thank you for your financial investment in the Art Center. Illuminate, highlighting the visual arts of our programming. Impact, driving arts in our communities, which make a difference in the lives of so many. I'd like to take this opportunity to offer a special thank you to our sponsors, Bankers Trust, BNIM, Equitrust, Grinnell College, Homesteaders Life Company, Isles Funeral Homes, Mid-American Energy, Substance Architecture, Willis Auto Campus, Workiba. We'd also like to thank our patron donors as well as our committee and board of trustees. When we started planning this year's gala in early January, we had an idea of how to take our guests on a journey with us, focusing on how your investment in the Art Center allows us to illuminate the work of diverse art and artists and impact the lives of many across our community. Little did we know how relevant that would become over the coming months. The annual gala is the largest art center fundraising event and allows us to provide free museum admission to everyone, along with free museum programming and community outreach partnerships with more than 40 different partners. Tonight, we will illuminate interesting artworks from the Art Center's permanent collection, as well as listen to the impact made on our community outreach partners. We'll wrap up the evening with remarks from director Jeff Fleming, who has a special announcement that you will be the first to hear. As tonight's virtual event is a first for the Art Center, we hope you will snap some selfies and take some photos of how we are celebrating and enjoying the event and share them on your social media. Use hashtag DMACGala2020 on Facebook and Instagram, and you might even make tonight's historical photo reel. Now, let's get things started. We hope that you enjoy your meal during this evening's celebration. So before we get into the meat of the program, we will kick things off first with an overview on the art of plating a meal with Cherry Madol from Tangerine Caterers of this evening's event. Thank you, Rosemary, and thank all of you for supporting the Des Moines Arts Center. The visual aspect of food, or the art of plating, is one of the delightful parts of eating. I'd like to introduce you to our chefs, Chef Christopher Botworth Nichols and Chef Kelsey McCrate Williamson. Their artistic talent brought you the meal you're about to enjoy. Christopher, can you tell them a little bit about the food they're going to eat? Certainly. So in your box, you're going to find your appetizer, your salad, and your choice of entree. There's also an illustration there if you choose to plate it yourself, as if we were there doing it for you. I would recommend when eating this, you can eat at room temp or you can heat it up in the oven. Just do not microwave it. Kelsey, tell us about dessert. Your dessert this evening is an apple cider panna cotta with a salted caramel mousse and a cranberry gelée. It's all ready for you, prepared by yours truly. So all you have to do is get out your spoons and I'd recommend you keep it in the cooler until you're ready to serve it. Thank you and enjoy. Wow, that was interesting, and now I really can't wait to enjoy my dinner. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Gala Committee member and local artist, Laura Palmer, for designing the menu cards for tonight's dinner. Such a fun way to commemorate the hashtag DMACGala2020. We now have the opportunity to learn more about the significance of several amazing works from the Art Center's permanent collection. We'll also hear directly from the community about the ongoing impact of art-related programming and the role the Art Center plays in making art accessible to everyone. 
Let's listen. In 1946, French modernist Henri Matisse made four paintings posed by Elvira Van Eeft at his residence, the Villa Le Rêve, in the south of France. She was a Belgian Congolese journalist. For much of 1946, she was a regular and welcome visitor to the Villa Le Rêve. She and Matisse discussed books that they had both recently read. During this time, Matisse placed her at the center of some of the richest and most decorative paintings that he had ever made. These paintings were among the final easel paintings made by Matisse before he turned his attention to the paper cutouts that defined his work until his death eight years later. Hi, my name is Lisa Fox. I have the absolute pleasure and honor to serve as the CEO of Youth Emergency Services and Shelter. Last night we had uh, 26 lives in our hands. Uh, we will feed them three meals today and our amazing staff will do whatever they can to engage them and help them feel protected. Our mission as an organization is to change lives by protecting children and empowering families. Uh, we protect those children in the shelter, but the work that we do in empowering those families and those kids to succeed and hopefully divert them from ever needing a night in shelter is some of our most important work. The partnerships that we have with agencies and organizations across the community help us succeed in making the most of their stay when they're with us. And the Des Moines uh, Art Center is no different, uh, a great partner for us. They do so much for these kids to give them hope beyond their stay with us. Joe? Yeah, uh, my name is Joe, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the activities that they've done. Uh, the Des Moines Art Center has come in and made door decorations for the kids. Uh, they worked using aluminum foil and Sharpies to make cool little uh, decorations that they could uh, mark their rooms with. They made wall hangings out of oil pastels and watercolors. Uh, they used pipe cleaners and sticks to make little sculptures. Um, all sorts of really cool activities to uh, break up the evenings for these kids and give them something to look forward to and to do. And I'm Christine Mullane, and I'm the Expressive Arts Therapist at YES. And I work with these children five days a week. And I can attest to what Joe was saying, that these partnerships with places like the Des Moines Arts Center are crucial to the time that's spent at our shelter with the youth. Uh, they need respite from some of the activities and their own stress. And as an art therapist, I provide those kinds of things with um, art therapy. But the art center coming in and bringing in these activities only broadens that, um, that service. And the, the youth really get to explore all these different techniques. They get a sense that the community does really care about them and it's so important. Um, they learn coping skills, problem solving skills, and most of all, it's uh, self-esteem building. So again, these things are very crucial to our shelter and to the success of our youth in the future. Again, I just want to reiterate, this partnership is so critical in giving uh, those kids a little bit of hope, a little bit of normalcy, uh, and uh, hopefully a love for the arts. So thank you to the Des Moines Arts Center. Hello, my name is Johan Hamilton and I'm an instructor at the Des Moines Art Center. I work with the Boys and Girls Club programs, YES, Alexito, the Department of Veterans Affairs, Conmigo, and other programs. At the Boys and Girls Club, we allow kids to access extracurricular art programs. We've been able to provide kids with scholarships for free classes at the Art Center and give them access to things they can't experience at home or at school. I feel fortunate that I'm able to put all of my education to use art making, art history, music, and foreign language. I get to teach classes in Spanish, French, and Hindi at multiple boys and girls clubs. I teach multiple classes, including painting, drawing, digital photography, digital drawing, and calligraphy. The Water Woman is a sculpture that was created by Wangeshi Mutu. Wangeshi is an artist who grew up in Nairobi. She has made many works about strong women and mythological characters who she believes are women. 
The water woman was an idea Wangeshi had thought about for many years because she loved swimming and loved the sea and the animals and plants that lived within it. When she was in her late teens, Wangeshi went to work at a museum on a small island named Lamu, where different coastal cultures had lived together for centuries. She swam in the Indian Ocean every day. There, for the first time in her life, she heard about sea spirits, water women, and mythological creatures. Wangeshi discovered that the people of Lamu had many stories about all types of creatures and their enchanting powers. When Wangeshi left for the United States, the stories and memories of her coastal life followed her. One day, from her New York studio, she decided to do some research about them. She found the Kiswahili name Nguva. The Nguva is an animal that is found on the coast of East Africa in the oceans and is known as a dugong, a very friendly and fleshy kind of sea cow somewhat like a manatee. Dugongs are often in danger because of how close they swim to boats and to the shore. Today, a sighting of a nguva is rare and it is not to be hunted or eaten when caught. The story goes these animals are also water women and that they are irresistible to sailors if ever they catch and slaughter them for their delicious meat. After much research, Wangeshi realized that she still didn't know what the sea woman even looked like. There were stories about them, but no pictures. She began imagining the mythological Nguva through drawings and paintings. At some point, she made a small clay sculpture of a water woman. Later, she made chocolate ones because she liked the story of fishermen who had to confess that they had eaten a dugong's flesh. Finally, she came up with a, what a nguva might look like. She had a face with a fearless expression, webbed hands, and a long mighty tail for swimming across the ocean, and ebony skin, perfect under sun and water. Wangeshi decided to call her simply Water Woman. Hello, my name is Mary Chapman, and I'm an art lover and a collector of African American and African art. Art brings joy to my inner soul and tells a story that connects me to my ancestry, events and actions that impact the world I live in as an African American woman. I'm an enthusiastic supporter of the Des Moines Art Center because it has many facets where I can become engaged in an art experience, and most importantly, it is a place where I can see myself in many of the images captured in the amazing permanent art collection, which includes an extensive representation of African American and African artists. I enjoy my involvement with several events where the Art Center continues its collaborative partnerships with community organizations to increase the center's reach into diverse communities. It is clear that the Art Center has placed a high priority on diversity, equity, and inclusion in the experiences available to the community. Currently, I'm involved with the Art Center's Black Stories Advisory Committee, which has been advising and providing guidance on framing a project to engage the African-American community in a meaningful experience with the Art Center, centering around conversations, strong personal stories, and experiences in response to an exhibit of African-American and African art from the Art Center's permanent collection, co-curated by two notable local African-American artists, Jordan Weber and Mitchell Squires. With the recent events, lifting up collective voices of addressing racial injustices and invisibility, this project is timelier now than ever before. It can be a mutually beneficial art experience for both the African-American community, where the community becomes more aware of the art that exists inside the Art Center and its relevance. And the Art Center accomplishes a broader reach within the African-American community, as well as more stronger connections. Watch for the opening of the Black Stories exhibit in October, Wakanda Forever. Hi, my name is Rachel Jackson, and I am the Community Access Education Manager. I have been in my current role for just under five years, 
um, but have been an employee of the Art Center um, in some capacity for about 10. As the Community Access Manager, I am responsible for maintaining and strengthening relationships with our community partners. The Des Moines Art Center's Community Access Programs provides art education that promotes social awareness and engagement with the hopes of creating access points to the museum and the museum's programs. Our Art Access Program's goal is to use art education to inspire individuals to acknowledge their unique identities and to use artistic expression to overcome adversities. Over the summer, the Art Center was able to pivot in order to continue to serve our community partners through virtual learning opportunities and art kits. This summer, the Art Center provided over 500 art kits to a variety of community partners. We plan to continue to serve our community partners um, to the best of our ability through the fall and eagerly look forward to serving our community in person when it is safe to do so. In collaboration with our community partner, Altoona Kids Cafe, we were able to provide 200 art kits that were added uh, to supplement free meals for youth in need. We also collaborated with Lutheran Services of Iowa and their Elder Refugee Program, where we provided 30 kits to social distancing elders. We promise to continue to find new and exciting ways to serve and collaborate with the community. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Jared Ledesma, Associate Curator here at the Art Center. Since the late 20th century, museums have been examining their collections and exhibitions and have noticed we've only been telling one story that's devoid of multiple voices. Here at the Art Center, my colleagues and I have taken tremendous strides towards telling many stories through visual art. We've worked hard at diversifying our collections and exhibitions, and it's shown. In the past few years, we've acquired many works by artists of color, including the lesser-known artist Bill Trailer and the up-and-coming Jamaican artist Ebony Patterson, as well as artists who belong to the LGBTQ community, such as Carrie Moyer and Edie Fake. We presented Monument Valley, a trailblazing exhibition that challenged the racist stereotypes inherent to the legacy of the American frontier, as well as Queer Abstraction, the first exhibition in the Art Center's history to solely focus on sexuality and gender identity. Next summer, we'll be presenting Justin Favela, Central American, an exhibition featuring the work of a queer Latinx artist that synthesizes art history traditional Mexican art and history and decoration. Just a bit more about queer abstraction since I'm pretty proud of it and you should be too. The exhibition brought a record number of guests to its opening and earned widespread press. Noted curator and art historian Donna DeSalvo called it a really smart, risky, bold, and committed project, while guests noted that it was long overdue in the art world and that it captured the love, beauty, struggle, pain, and pure essence of what it means to be a member of the LGBTQ community. As I mentioned earlier, from that show, we acquired the works Beside Me, which includes the first acquisition of work by a trans-identified artist into the collection. Together, these accomplishments are just a small sample of the great work we're doing at the Art Center and strongly represent our commitment to telling everyone's story. Hi, I'm Paula Placencia and a lifelong resident of West Des Moines, Iowa. And I've been involved with the Art Center for the best, about the past 20 years. And how I got involved was with this project called Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. And we did, made a decision that this might be a one-time thing. So if we're gonna do a one-time event, let's make it big, let's make it bold, let's celebrate four people within the Latino community. So we honored an entrepreneur, we honored a veteran, we honored a social activist um, who was like a society, social worker, and we also honored a political activist to make sure that everybody within the community was represented, as well as there were two sides of that community. We had the west side, which was Valley Junction, and we had the south side, which was the southeast bottoms. And so we wanted to make sure both of those communities were represented. It took a team to build that ofrenda, and so after the first year, we had a great success. And so, it's, and then Jeff comes to us and said, you know what, you had a great turnout, so let's continue this next year. And this year, with the COVID, 
Uh, because we cannot celebrate the way we'd like to celebrate, we decided to do something different. We decided to do a reflection, a montage, so to speak, of the past 20 years. So when you look at the website, hopefully you'll be able to see some of the friends we've had, and they've gone everything from the traditional Frenda to a non-traditional Frenda. You'll be able to read some things maybe about the Frenda as well as some of the people that have been honored. And we hope that you enjoy this because this is very much not only a part of us celebrating our culture and our heritage and our community, but it's also a way to share it with everybody else and to make death not so sad, um, especially now this time of life and this time of the year, but also to make death a way to reflect on somebody's life and celebrate what they have done. We enjoy this partnership with the Des Moines Art Center because art is definitely a part of our culture. It's gone back since Mesoamerica, pre-Columbian times. And so to come here to the Art Center and see either some artwork that has been done by Latinos or has been a reflection or has been, um, I want to say, maybe an indication of Latino history or culture has been very gratifying. We in the Latino community look forward to growing a better and greater partnership with the Des Moines Art Center. The John and Mary Papa John Sculpture Park has undoubtedly changed the city of Des Moines since its opening in 2009. This beloved and iconic landmark was created with shared vision, support, and collaboration from John and Mary Papa John, the city of Des Moines, the Des Moines Art Center, and civic leaders who all believed that the art of our time should be made available and accessible to the entire community. And in the last 11 years, the community has proven this vision as valued. For in the park, you will frequently find school groups on field trips, amateur and professional artists painting, sketching, or photographing the works, someone weary taking some time to sit back and relax, picnics, puppies, professionals taking a brisk walk or enjoying lunch in the middle of the day, and perhaps even a couple getting engaged. The John and Mary Papa John Sculpture Park remains accessible with no fence, no gate, no admission fee, with the work's labels printed in English, Spanish, and Braille, and audio tours available anytime free of charge. At this point, the city's own identity is inseparable from the park. Its artworks make constant appearances on t-shirts, postcards, family photos, promotional images. Even my Des Moines Public Library card showcases a beautiful photo of Plenza's Nomad sculpture which I have also heard referred to as Des Moines' unofficial mascot. But what city would not want to be defined by a place where you can freely experience 31 individual sculptures? By diverse artists spanning the globe, expressing vast visions, modern and contemporary works, figurative and abstract representations, and play frisbee? Artists such as Keith Haring, who was a big believer in public artwork, Ogo Rondinoni with his 2,000-year-old cast olive tree and lovable moonrise faces, Ai Weiwei's stark and stunning iron tree trunk, and the delightful pumpkin large by artist Yayoi Kusama. Together, these works create a magical place to see, think, and wonder, a place to celebrate around and give space to our community. I think that maybe our newest piece by artist Robert Indiana said it best. The creation of this park was an act of love, and I think Des Moines loves it back. Good evening. My name is Amberly Dahl, and I've been given the amazing opportunity to share with you my life-changing experiences at the Des Moines Art Center. I started at the Des Moines Art Center when I was eight years old. That consisted of all kinds of fun ceramic classes, watercolor painting, and I really started finding a true passion for art. My instructors really encouraged me to push myself, so for that I signed up for Teen Academy at age 14. This is a great program that is free to the public and anyone is welcome to try out for it, and it's um, a select amount of teens that are interested in art and given the great opportunity to have critiques from different artists and um, have the experience of really learning what about the art world. Um, now at age 18, I've had the opportunity to help run the program as an intern at the Des Moines Art Center. I have had the opportunities to have my own art shows. I've had the opportunities to also grow my portfolio. I've been able to get critiques from all different kinds of artists that they've brought in around the United States to help Teen Academy, um, as well as some amazing instructors. 
Thanks to the Arts Center, I was able to um, grow my portfolio enough to try out for college at age 16. So I started at the Art Institute of Chicago, and um, I was also able to do a high school internship my senior year at the Des Moines Arts Center. Um, I was able to have experience in education and working under some amazing instructors. Um, I also worked with a great grant team that helped me um, understand what the Des Moines Arts Center really does for the community. I was able to interview different community partners, including um, foster homes, um, different mental health programs for kids, and different places around the community that have really taught me how much the Arts Center means to our community. Um, I've met some amazing people who've really helped me become successful. I've met some lifelong friends, and I am now working towards a fine art degree. Uh, I'd never be where I am today without the Des Moines Arts Center. Thank you, Amberly, for sharing your story. Hopefully, our illuminating virtual tour of the Art Center Galleries and the John and Mary Papa John Sculpture Park has helped you understand the impact that your investment continues to make. Your generosity and support allow us to touch the lives of individuals from all walks of life in powerful and meaningful ways. To confirm our commitment to continuing this work in the community, the Art Center staff and board have created an inclusion statement entitled, Creating Together, to guide our actions and our efforts. It is my pleasure to unveil it now. Every voice belongs in contemporary art. The Des Moines Arts Center commits to value and represent the unique experiences and perspectives of every visitor and staff member, working toward equity and inclusivity within the museum, school, and the community strengthens our ability to create better together. You can help us on our journey by sharing the story of the Des Moines Arts Center. Invite a guest to visit. Share our inclusion statement with your friends and social networks. Invite your peers and businesses to invest in the Arts Center. I would now like to thank Rosemary Parson for her leadership as this year's gala chair, our gala committee for their hard work in making tonight a reality in this very odd year, our extraordinary staff, our corporate sponsors, and you our patrons and guests for being a part of our journey. Thank you everyone for investing in your art center.